An American hunter is pushing back against her critics. After photos of her next to a giraffe she killed in South Africa triggered global outrage. You saw that with the giraffe. Deborah Messing said she was a vile, heartless, selfish murderer. Social media has brought fresh scrutiny to a centuries old tradition, trophy hunting. You're a horrible person and I hope you die a slow, painful death. Hunters claim that killing one animal keeps many others alive. A lot of hunters are definitely true conservationists. There's no question about it. Oh my God. But as a record number of species face extinction, outrage against hunting intensifies. Putting a price tag on any animal's head diminishes the value of that animal. We travel to one of the world's premier trophy hunting destinations to find out whether hunting helps or harms the long-term survival of wildlife. The world needs to see this because this is what's happening. If we don't get the help, we might end up losing the world. I was raised around hunting. My family has hunted. I remember when I was little, we would go into the little, small mom and pop stores, you know, back home. And you would go in and everybody would have their pictures hung up of what they've harvested. Tess Talley is an avid trophy hunter. Today, she's on a ranch that stocks the grounds with exotic game. It's the adventure, a little bit of adrenaline rush. And then there's, you know, that, that moment, and that's excitement. Everything that you led up to just come together. Good. They don't go down easy all the time. Tess isn't just any trophy hunter. This is where we take the pictures. Okay, you ready? Not long ago, a picture just like this made Tess infamous. Perfect. And turned her life upside down. An American hunter is pushing back against her critics. After in 2017, she killed a giraffe. Killed and in the summer of 2018, the picture she posted went viral. This is um, a part of the black giraffe that I shot. Black due to old age. Something that I could take around with me and have him with me on all my hunts. I got the gun case made. And I have decorative pillows made out of him. And everybody loves them. So tell me about that giraffe. He tell me delicious. about that whole experience. <laughs> he really was. Not only was he beautiful and majestic, but he was, he was good. And we all take pictures with our harvest. Yeah. That's what we do. It's what they've always done. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Giraffes don't get the headlines elephants and rhinos do, but their populations are also plummeting. Certain subspecies dropped 40% in recent years and are now endangered. The giraffe test hunted wasn't among the endangered groups, but celebrities with large followings like Deborah Messing, Ricky Gervais, and Bill Maher went after her. I saw that with the giraffe a couple of days ago. She didn't want to her. I mean, a year and a half later, she still receives death threats. You're a horrible person and I hope you die a slow, painful death. We know where you live and your family too. Enjoy your last moments of life. I'll mount you on the wall, see how you look. Watch your back. The hunt is on. <laughs> yeah. I know where you are and I'm coming for you. It's been hell. I have encountered cameras at my work following me to work. Um, I've received mail at my home text messages, the media has hung out in front of my house for a week, week and a half. So you haven't, you haven't spoken out to any media um, in this year and a half. Why, why now? I figured everybody already had their opinion made up. Can you understand why someone who, you know, came across your photo would be pissed? Absolutely, yeah, I understand. 
Um, it's an animal laying there. Is there it's anything just, that you would like to say to me about the draft? Like, did it make you mad? Um, yeah, it did. I don't agree with what you do. I don't get why you do this, especially when it comes to something like the draft. But do I think you deserve the hate? Absolutely not. Is it worth it to you? I mean, given. given I'm not going to back down. Hate, I'm not going to back down. I'm going to stand up for what I do, for what I believe in, and everybody else that does it as well. That's part of conservation. It's estimated that up to 80% of trophy hunters worldwide are American, and industry dominance on full display at conventions like this one. This convention is vast, spanning several blocks in, in any direction. There are over a thousand or so vendors here selling everything from leather goods to artwork. Uh, but the biggest draw is for people to essentially buy the opportunity to go out and hunt a trophy. American trophy imports outnumber the world's second largest importer, China, by tenfold. In 2017 alone, 650,000 trophies were imported into the U.S. But industry leaders argue the biggest beneficiary is the wildlife itself. There's a mischaracterization of what, what hunters do and what hunters support. Corey Mason is the executive director of the Dallas Safari Club, a pro-hunting organization that hosts this convention. I would argue that Dallas Safari Club has funded more conservation projects than probably, you know, most of them combined that are, that are non-hunting or anti-hunting. Now when you go on a hunt, there's different fees that come from that. Those fees specifically go to those communal lands. If it pays, it stays. If it pays, it stays means that when people are willing to pay to hunt an animal, there's an incentive to protect the species and its habitat. But record keeping and data regarding these claims, especially when it comes to trophy hunting globally, is piecemeal and inconclusive. And so it's highly controversial in the conservation community. It's important to have wild animals thrive, but why is the price of that this needless slaughter of these animals for their parts? It diminishes what wildlife is. If they can be reduced to, to a chair, to a knife handle, that's, not, that, that's, that's no trade-off. Trophy hunting is legal in at least 63 countries. Nearly a quarter of those are on the African continent, including Zimbabwe. One of the country's largest private game reserves, Booby Valley Conservancy, says its wildlife is thriving thanks to the if it pays, it stays model. It's just amazing. This place is just teeming with wildlife everywhere you look. Until the 90s, this was a cattle ranch. The animals brought in have since multiplied. And now, according to Booby Valley Management, there's robust populations of wildlife, including the big five African game, even vulnerable species like lion and elephants. It's our first elephant sighting of the trip here. I'm counting about eight or so. It's incredible you can hear them eating through the trees. According to a 2016 comprehensive census, elephant populations are decreasing about 8% a year across Africa, except in protected areas, including reserves like Gubi. I don't look happy. We just got charged that. About, uh, Four. Even more. There's several adults and oh my god. They've just formed like this offensive flank that will come right at us. chasing us for the last 15 minutes. This has been one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life. And also one of the most terrifying. Yeah, morning, Lazarus. It's uh, Mr. Adam, we're back here, Tobin. Pete Fick is one of the hunting guides here. 
He previously worked as a game scout in government-run national parks. Look out at this beautiful view. You don't see any sign of a human, which I love. I'm managing a lot of the hunting and the marketing as such. I have a lot of interest in what happens here because I'm, I'm concerned for the place, I'm concerned for the wildlife here. At 1,200 square miles, Booby is roughly the size of Rhode Island. But the wildlife inside is enclosed by nearly 300 miles of electrified fencing. Why is it necessary to have a fenced off conservancy? It's necessary to have a fenced off uh, conservancy uh, to stop human animal conflict. Uh, right around us, there's thousands of families, uh, people living right around us. So it would just create havoc if, if there wasn't uh, a fence to stop the wildlife going into the communities. It's to protect the people outside and protect the wildlife within. Booby management says maintenance costs here run upwards of 2.5 million US dollars each year including salaries, utilities and fuel, and community development. More than 80% of that money comes from trophy hunting clients. So in Africa, I've done quite a few Plains game hunts. Uh, the antelope species, uh, kudu, impala, gimsbuck, blesbuck, springbuck. Any interest in elephants or? Actually, I have shot an elephant. Oh, OK. What brings you to Zimbabwe? So I am here on my fourth leopard hunt. I've never taken a leopard. I've been unsuccessful the previous three times. So uh, I'm hoping maybe this is my trip. Leopards have lost nearly 75% of their habitat worldwide, according to a 2016 research paper. The Zimbabwe government limits trophy hunts to about 3% of all species to sustain populations. Only old males who can't reproduce can be killed. Is that Impala? Yes. To lure a leopard, LG has to first kill several other animals to use as bait, a practice criticized by some groups as unethical. I'm real happy with the shot. It was a, uh, a good, clean shot, and uh, it was over quick. Uh, one kilometer northeast of main water hole, one shot, one mother. Every animal taken here has to be registered with booby management. So typically on a leopard hunt, you're going to have between 8 and 14 of these bait sites. Uh, it really depends on how fast you get a cat in the tree. Once you get them feeding, you got to keep these baits refreshed. Otherwise, they'll eat it all and move on. So we have to check these every day. Typically, people just think, I don't know, that we just drive up and lean out of the truck. You stick a piece of meat up in the tree and it's done and dusted. You get a leopard feeding and it's, that's it. How much is a leopard hunt? So typically they're going to advertise about 15 to 20,000 US, but that's just the starting price. Obviously you have to bait for all the leopard and then that's an additional cost. So uh, if we're lucky and we are able to shoot the leopard, that'll be another $6,500. Uh, trophy fee. How much would you say you've spent on all of your hunts in Africa? I don't know, probably between 200 and 225,000. So you've spent $225,000 hunting in Africa. Yes. You are that American asshole that people say, you know, goes to Africa, drops all this money for a trophy. Right. What's in it for you? What, what are you hoping to get out of this? This, being here. There are a lot of ways to get away. Why does it have to involve killing an animal? You know, I don't know if I would actually do it otherwise. If I was just doing a photo safari, the truth of the matter is something would come up at work two days beforehand and I would probably cancel the trip. 
you know, I'd find an excuse to do. But all this has to be planned out so far in advance. There's so many moving parts. There's so many people involved. Most of these conservancies are, are legitimate operations. There's no unified trophy hunting regulatory body, only at-will hunting associations. So no comprehensive data exists analyzing various trophy hunting operations or revenue streams. Okay, what's the story with the leopard? What luck are you having? Part of Pete's job is helping hunters like LG get their trophy. So he's going after a zebra to use as additional bait. That's uh, one shot, the uh, Rana area, uh, one Dobi Makopa. Having to kill animals in order for most of them to survive is an absolute necessity out here. We try to manage this entire area for all of our species, not just about the elephant, the rhino, the lion, giraffe, whatever it may be, it's about everything. Just to use one example, like an elephant for example, uh, an area can only maintain X amount of elephant, like all of our animals, you know. So you can't just let the uh, elephant population just grow and grow and grow. So their argument was, well, we have to manage these populations anyway because we have a finite space. We may as well sell that lion or sell that elephant. Bring, bring in that money, create um, more viable spaces for them. Why do they have to be managed lethally? They, there's nothing they could do. There's, we amino contracept elephants. There are ways of humanely managing wild populations. You don't have to let them breed to kill them because you, oops, have a surplus, got to kill them. No. Not all animals at Booby can be hunted. The critically endangered black rhino is off limits. Rhino horn are worth a fortune on the black market. It's in especially high demand in Asia where it's thought to have medicinal benefits. We gain most of our funding through hunting, um, hunting of lion, elephant, that allows us to have essentially the funds to protect these rhino. If legal hunting were to get shut down here, do you think then the rhino population would dwindle? 100%. We, we need, currently as it stands, more hunting. All right, Adam, now you're going to see probably the worst sight you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh my god. These are all rhino skulls that have been poached, yeah? This is what we're fighting, you know, and uh, it's not going away. Uh, we're fighting tooth and nail. We do need help. We are these so-called animal lovers around the world. But where are these people? Why are they not helping? Why can't they work with us, help us to stop this terrible, terrible disaster that's happened? Can I see this? I don't look seeing this, but the, the world needs to see this, be showing us this is what's happening. And uh, if we don't get the help, we might end up losing them all. Yeah. Booby says one of its biggest expenses is protecting its rhinos from poachers, nearly three quarters of a million dollars per year and rising. Many non-hunters have such a difficult time understanding 
when someone like you who hunts animals, who kills animals, can say, well, I love them. How do you explain? I can understand people feeling like that. I, I think had I not known as much as I do, I'd feel exactly the same. The reality of the situation here, uh, it's raw Africa. Um, you know, it's third world countries you're dealing with and uh, all wildlife stems from habitat. So once that habitat's gone, all the wildlife will go. Around 200 villages surround Bubi. The land outside the park is virtually arid and meat is scarce. Locals can't afford hunting fees. They rely on donations from Bubi, like this giraffe that was hunted a couple days before we arrived. What percentage of the meat that goes into the community as a result of hunting clients who come in? Yeah, it's pretty much, it's almost 100% of, of, of the meat that comes to the community derived from our hunting clients. It's, it equates to uh, 40 tons of meat every single year uh, that goes out to the community. Okay, and, and, and nothing goes to waste? Absolutely zero goes to waste. We are going to share equal to village. Yeah. How many people? It's 200 and, or 240. What do you think about the park? We are here to protect the, the, the park mm -hmm. so that poachers don't come through us. Is it fair that y you can't hunt, the local people can't hunt in the park, but Americans can hunt in the park? Is I that fair? I, I, yeah, as I see, it is fair because the American bring money to the park and then we get that share from the park. According to most studies, the financial benefit of trophy hunting to local communities is a fraction of the revenue generated from tourism, including photo safaris. Of the eight African nations that we surveyed, the tourism dollars coming in was about $17 billion. Only one, less than 1% 1 of that was money that was collected from trophy hunting. Ecotourism pays. Ecotourism should stay. Doesn't the footprint that it requires and brings ultimately encroach on the habitats of these wild lands? Ecotourism absolutely has to be managed in a way that is respectful of wildlife and, and very much attuned to what the needs of the animals are in these spaces. But it is better. Everyone assumes wildlife's going to be there for future generations. It's not something we can just assume is going to be all right. It's not. A 2019 UN report found that one million species now face extinction. Many experts agree that habitat loss from human encroachment, not trophy hunting, is the biggest threat to wildlife. It's so green and lush on this side. This must be the boundary, the outer boundary of the park. On this side, you can't, uh, you can't sustain wildlife. And as we've seen over here, you can't, uh, you can't take a few steps without encountering vastly different species of, of, uh, of wildlife. It's incredible. At Booby, the if it pays, it stays model seems to be working, but it's only one private reserve whose thriving ecosystem is enjoyed solely by those who can afford to pay for that privilege. 50 years, even 30 years down the future, this area will be a viable ecotourism destination. But right now it's not.